Hello one, Bruce, and this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new intriguing revelations in regards to the mysterious phenomenon known as FRB, fast radio burst. The radio phenomenon we still don't really understand very well, but that seems to happen pretty much all around us, pretty much at all times, and coming from every direction in the universe. But this new discovery might actually take us a little bit closer to explaining at least some of the FRBs. Because it turns out that some of them are also related to the extremely powerful collisions between neutron stars, which often result in extremely powerful gravitational wave emissions, but also an explosion known as a kilonova. An explosion that's kind of similar to a supernova, but usually slightly weaker, although also producing very powerful gamma ray emissions and converting a lot of lighter elements into much heavier elements such as gold, platinum, and so on. In other words, there seems to be an intriguing connection between neutron star collisions, which often results in the production of some kind of an intermediary object that seems to be able to survive for a couple of hours, which then results in the production of a black hole as this object collapses into one, but also a production of a fast radio burst. And so let's discuss some of these discoveries and some of these mysteries in a little bit more detail, but I guess first, a super quick review of what exactly FRBs are. In a nutshell, these are radio signals, usually lasting anywhere from a few milliseconds to possibly a few hundred milliseconds, but very often coming from very distant parts of the galaxy. Which is exactly why they weren't really discovered until relatively recently. And what's intriguing is that back in the early 2000s, another similar event coming from one of the Australian observatories turned out to be a kind of a false detection. There's actually a story of what's known as a periton, which was basically someone opening a microwave oven not so far away from one of the radio observatories, which basically resulted in a radio signal kind of similar to what FRBs look like as well. And so at first the scientists believed that maybe this is actually something similar. But years and years of analysis determined that a lot of these signals were actually real, and they were coming from really really distant objects. And moreover, in the last few years, the scientists have also discovered that pretty much all of them are produced by very powerful events. In just a few milliseconds, they seem to release just as much energy as our sun does in a few days. And theoretically, at least a few hundred of these reach our planet pretty much every single day. But only some are visible to us. And so these seem to be very common events happening all across the universe. And also occurring in different types of galaxies, different parts of galaxies, and also possessing different types of properties, including different types of polarization. But based on the comparison with a lot of other signals, they represented a completely new phenomenon. They could not be explained as anything else. And because of how ubiquitous and how common these types of signals were, it basically became the biggest mystery in radio astronomy. What exactly was causing this? And one of the first explanations, though not the only explanation, involved magnetars. Super super powerful, very magnetized neutron stars that do have a tendency to produce very powerful radio emissions once in a while. And because FRBs have a tendency to be also extremely polarized, which does require very powerful magnetic fields, these did provide the best possible explanation. And in 2020, there was a major breakthrough coming from our own galaxy, the Milky Way. A very well-known magnetar that you see right here, G1935-2154, had a major powerful burp that actually did involve an FRB as well. And to scientists this meant one thing, magnetars indeed are responsible for at least some FRBs and at least one appeared right here in the Milky Way galaxy. But this didn't explain all of them, because some of them were repeated FRBs, some of them had very different patterns, with some of them being a little bit too periodic to explain with a simple magnetar. Which kind of suggested that maybe this is just a phenomenon that seems to happen around various neutron stars, but potentially has very different ways to be generated. And at least some theories support this idea by suggesting that certain FRBs can also occur when neutron stars collide, and end up producing a very unstable object, potentially resembling a magnetar, right at the moment of collision, but right before the object collapses into a black hole. In theory, this unusual object can exist for a few minutes, or maybe even a few hours. And to some extent, this might resemble a magnetar, or at least an extremely fast-spinning neutron star, an ultra-massive neutron star that remains stable because of very powerful magnetic fields, but also because of fast rotation. And so during those few minutes or maybe few hours of its existence, some theories predicted that it's possible for this object to also release fast radio bursts. But this remained a hypothesis for a very long time. Nobody had any evidence. Until I guess now. This recent paper that you can find in the description below was able to find at least one object 
that seems to directly suggest a very strong correlation between gravitational waves and a well-known FRB, or basically implying that a distant neutron star collision might have been responsible for an FRB after all. And so here's exactly what they found. In order to discover the connection, they looked at the catalog that was released just a couple of months ago, containing all known fast radio bursts detected in the last few years. This catalog contains just over 500 different sources, confirmed in the last few years, but that's obviously just a small part of all potential detections that were missed as well. But what the scientists were hoping to find is a direct correlation with something else, something coming from another catalog. This one right here, GWTC-2, a gravitational wave catalog containing 39 gravitational wave detections from the LIGO and Virgo observatories. And they then wanted to see if any of these events happen at the same time somewhere out there in the universe. And turns out that there's one hit, something that was observed on 25th of April 2019, at an approximate distance of 520 million light years away from us, with this event being the second ever neutron star collision ever found. Back then this was a pretty groundbreaking discovery and once again confirmed that a lot of heavier elements like gold and platinum were definitively created during these events. But it just so happens that around the same time, from a relatively similar location, and most importantly, at a relatively similar distance, the radio astronomers have also discovered an FRB. And though it is possible that these are unrelated events, the probability of this being completely by chance is about 0.00019, much, much lower than 1%, with the implication being that the neutron stars produce this particular FRB. But I guess what's really intriguing about this detection is that it's approximately two and a half hours apart. Or basically, once the neutron stars collided, the gravitational waves coming from this event were detected about two and a half hours before the detection of a fast radio burst. Which kind of suggests one thing. It's possible that this unusual intermediary object lasted for just two and a half hours, very likely existing as some kind of a supermassive neutron star, with the collapse of the neutron star being prevented by either very fast rotation very powerful magnetic field, or the combination of both, with this hypothetical neutron star known as a Blitzar. It was actually a hypothetical concept pretty much until now, but this particular detection seems to prove its existence. Basically, these would be neutron stars that can extremely rapidly collapse into a black hole when their rotation speed slows down just enough when they can no longer remain neutron stars collapsing into black holes as a result. And because in this case it survived for two and a half hours, all of this is consistent with theories and the simulations from all of the previous studies. Although in this case, in this detection, the two individual neutron stars that collided to create this blitzer, for some reason were actually much more massive than any individual neutron stars located in the Milky Way. So there is also a bit of a mystery in regards to their origin. But because the rate of binary neutron star collisions is actually much lower than the total rate of all of the FRBs detected so far, this is probably just one of many mechanisms that seem to be able to produce these unusual events. Or in other words, these very fast radio bursts can potentially be produced by a lot of different things out there in the universe. And though many are produced by magnetars or very unusual neutron stars, and at least one have now been definitively proven to be a result of a neutron star collision, many seem to come from different sources that even now cannot be explained. Especially the ones that seem to repeat quite regularly. And you can find more about these FRBs in the videos in the description. By the way, in case you're wondering, this particular detection came from a galaxy known as UDC 10667, a spiral Milky Way-like galaxy located about 520 million light years away from us. But I guess for now that's kind of all we know. FRBs still remain a mystery, but a mystery that we're getting closer and closer to solving. Some of these signals are definitely magnetar related, some of them are related to neutron star collisions, but many are still unresolved, which means that we'll be coming back and talking more about them in some of the future videos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. And either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.